Hello and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial and today we're going to be looking at using smart objects in Photoshop and the particular situation we're going to look at is how you can speed up your workflow when you're creating a document where you want to change out images, how smart objects can help you be more efficient in your workflow. So I'm going to create this image as the background for a calendar page and we're going to build up what the calendar image is going to look like and then change it out for various other images. So in the layers palette you'll see that I just have this one image layer. I want this to be black and white so I'm going to add an adjustment layer with layer, new adjustment layer and then I'm going to just add a black and white adjustment and just click OK. I'm just going to take the default adjustment. Then I'm going to lighten this with layer, new adjustment layer and then levels. So I'm not baking this into the image, I'm just applying these changes as adjustment layers so that they're above the image layer here. That's pretty important because I don't want to alter this image at all. Now this image is the background image for this calendar page and I want it on top as well. I want a color version on top, much smaller and with a border around it. So at this stage I'm going to convert this to a smart object by right clicking on it and choose convert to smart object. It's now converted from a background image so it's been unlocked and it's called layer zero and it's got this little thumbnail in it indicating that that's a smart object. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of it. So I'm just going to drag it onto the new icon here. So I've got two smart objects identical. I'm going to pull the second one, the copy I just made onto the very top of the document. So it's now on top of everything else. I'm going to hold the shift key and just size it down place it approximately where I want it to be and I'm going to give it a black border. So with it selected I'm just going to give it a black stroke. So there's settings already created for us. Now I'm thinking that this background image might look a little bit better if it was a bit larger. So I'm going to the bottom most layer with the move tool selected. I'm going to hold shift and alt and just enlarge it somewhat. So when I'm happy with this, this is going to be the foundation image for my calendar and then I'm going to create this over and over again with different images for each calendar page. So I'd go ahead and save it at this point. But let's go and see how smart objects are going to help us in creating additional pages for this calendar. I'm going to click on one or other of these smart object layers, it doesn't matter which. I'll right click and I'm going to choose replace contents. And then I'm going to go and select a different image for our calendar. So I'm just going to click that image and click place. And you can see that the images, both images have now been replaced in this document. They've also been sized appropriately, they're formatted exactly the same way and so I could just go ahead and print this. I don't have to do anything else because everything has already been done. For the next page in the calendar I'm going to right click my smart object, go to replace contents, go and get another image, click place and everything's already done and ready to go. Now this presupposes a couple of things. One of them is that the images are all the same size and they are all the same resolution. The resolution part is critical. It doesn't matter what resolution images you're using, what matters is that every single one of them has the same resolution. For me these were all 300 dpi images but let's go and see what happens when I try to use one that is a different resolution and this one here is a different resolution. So I'm just going to place it in. You can see that things have failed somewhat as a result of this. What's happened is that this was a 150 dpi image instead of a 300 and it appears like the whole effect has been lost. It hasn't quite. Let's have a look and see how we would salvage this. I'm going to choose image and then reveal all because part of these images is outside the artboard. I'll press Control or Command 0 just to zoom back out. What we've lost in the process is the cropping on the larger image at the back. So you can see that while we haven't lost everything, we've lost enough of our document to make it fairly imperative that we pre-prepare these images to the same approximate size and the same resolution before we start out. Now I can just press Control Alt Z 
a couple of times to go back. So I haven't lost everything. I just can't use that other image until I do something with its resolution. Now there is a setting in Photoshop too that you need to be aware of. So I'm going to go to Edit Preferences. On a Mac you would choose Photoshop and then Preferences and we're going to General. And it's this option here, Resize Image During Place. And I have that disabled. If you don't have that disabled, you may have problems when you're replacing the image with the entire document failing, even if you've got images that are the same size and the same resolution. So just make sure that that preference is set properly before you begin. And provided you're working with images that approximately the same size and the same resolution, this is a really handy way of working with images. Now the way that we created this second smart object by dragging this one onto the new icon meant that these two images were locked together. So change one and you change both. Well there's a second way that you can make a copy. I'm going to take this one here, I'm going to right click and instead of dragging it onto this new icon, I'm going to choose here new smart object via copy. So I've got two smart objects on top of each other here. This is the one that was made by copy. This is the original. So let's just turn the original off so we're not seeing it. And let's go and replace this one. Right click and choose replace contents. And let's go and get one of our other images and click place. And here you can see that things are different. These two smart objects are not the same smart objects anymore. So there are two ways that you can create smart objects. One of them is where the two are linked together. So you change one, you change both. The other one is that you're creating a copy, but it's unlinked. It's no longer linked to the original, so they can be changed independently of each other. When you drag a smart object onto this new icon, you're creating a linked version. The two are going to be linked together. They're always going to change together. If you make a copy by right clicking and choose new smart object via copy, then you're creating an unlinked version. Smart objects used this way make a really good efficient workflow when you want to create a document and then be able to change out images in it. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.